the Grand Grim Roar, probably the most diabolical and reliable of the Grim Roars. Le Dragon Rouge, very much related to the Grand Grim War, but there are differences, variations found in this text, and I recommend that you acquire it in the original French, although it is a little bit difficult, especially this edition right here. Grimoire Verum. This isn't such a nice edition. It's the Joseph H. Peterson edition. What I like about it is, is that it has a very extensive appendix that shows a lot of his research, and there are parallel translations. And I always like to read the Grim Roars, and, or at least interpret them in their original languages. Now, this edition of the Grim Roar of Honorius is also good. I mean, I, I prefer this, you know, to PDFs or any kind of computer text and everything. I always like print, even though the Namakon Publishing isn't the finest edition, but... Uh, most that you would find of the Grimoire of Honoris you couldn't purchase for much less than a thousand dollars. So uh, these are the, the four books that I wanted to talk about today because they have uh, the greatest influence on traditional Satanism and Cathedral of the Black Goat specifically. And uh, some differences and, and misconceptions with uh, other forms of Satan, specifically Levianism and how in the Satanic Bible the four names of the four lords of hell that are invoked are Lucifer, Satan, Belial, and Leviathan. Now, Satan and Lucifer, as we know it, being the same entity, it doesn't make sense where you would have both as a, as a lord of hell. And Belial and Leviathan are just completely in, irrelevant. I mean, they're not related, and uh, one could almost use them as a synonym for other deities. In the four books that I just mentioned, they all have one thing in common, at least three entities. It's all Lucifer, Astaroth, and Beelzebub. Now, Astaroth and Beelzebub both come from Philistine and Canaanite culture. The Philistine city of Ekron worshipped Baalzebub, which is a, a derivative of Beelzebub, as the city god of Ekron, and uh, they borrowed the lord of the Canaanites, Astarte, which originally was a goddess, but evolved into what we now know as Astaroth. Even though we use the names that we use today and the symbols that we use today, you know, mostly from the Black Magic Grim Wars, I kind of see that as a continuation. Maybe it's like a certain Satanists would try to equate us with Odinism or Wodernism or the Celtic faith and everything, but I would say the only true paganism, the only Pre, true pre-Judaic and pre-Christian uh, culture, if, if there is at all, that would be related to us would be the Philistines, who worshipped as what I just said. A bit about these books. This edition of the Grand Grimoire, very, very fine. I would say, uh, like in the fictional movie, The Ninth Gate, which is... Uh, movie version of the book The Dumas Club and everything, they have uh, the Book of the Nine Gates, you know, the ultimate infernal text and everything. I would say probably as close as you could come is here in the Grand Grim War. And uh, I like this Trident edition right here because the translator also included the original Italian that he translated it from, which this book has been in many different languages and uh, Italian was seen as, as probably the best of these, and I like that. This edition of Le Dragon Rouge, very, very hard to come by in the original French. Not to be confused at all with the English uh, translation, The Red Dragon, because I found a, a whole bunch of differences, and I think a, a lot is lost in translation, of course. But back to Levainism. Leviathan, Belial, Satan, and Lucifer. The only of the old texts of the Grim Wars where that combination of infernal names is found is in the book of Abramel and the Mage. And I think the reason why Levay used that in his book was probably in the 1950s when he formulated his pseudo-Satanism, his psychodrama. That was the only Grim Roar available. Of course, now it's the 21st century, 
and these books are more available if PDFs on the internet more than anything else, and we know a little bit more about the black magic culture, traditional ceremonial magic. So I find it kind of silly that the Church of Satan still uses the names Belial, Leviathan, Satan, Lucifer, even though they don't claim to believe in these entities, and to them it's all theater, because as LeVay said, they're humanists, but they find their humanism to be more stimulating under the conditions of imitating devil worship. Still, though, I think if uh, good theater should be as close to reality as possible, it's art imitating life. Enough on that. First book I ever picked up related to the subject was The Black Arts by Richard Calvendish. This, of course, is the second edition. I don't have a copy of the first edition to show you, but uh, it is what it is. Basically, this book gives you a rundown on the, the major ma magical practices of the day, but from a more sociological point of view. But it also talks about the origins of Satan, the Black Mass, and the, the peasants that worship the devil. And I think that's a, that's a lot of the essence of... Uh, devil worship, you know, in Cathedral of the Black Oak, modern as, as we know today and everything. It's a combination of what those ill peasants that couldn't read, you know, did at their Sabbaths, as, as well as the more educated ceremonial black magicians that, uh, I guess you wouldn't really call them Satanists per se, or at, at least according to their books, they were invoking the, the demons and the infernal spirits by Christian names and Christian th threats and... Uh, other things like that, but even that could have been veiled. Between, between those two and everything, I remember the first time that I picked up the Satanic Bible after reading the Black Arts and after studying the ceremonial magic and the, the Sabbaths of the Elizabethan era and Middle Ages and everything, I was expecting a book that would be more in, more in tune with all the re researches I had done over the years. Boy, was I disappointed. That, you know, the, the whole thing of say, people saying that, oh, you know, LaVey's book is how I always, you know, felt. And, you know, it gives them a good excuse to be just exactly as they are and not evolve at all, which I, I think is, is a symptom of LaVeyanism and everything, where, you know, the true worship of the devil would give an individual a transcendence of type. Well, that's why I wrote The Devil's Bible. Kind of what I was hoping and expecting when I first picked up LaVey's Satanic Bible. I really didn't intend to form my own organization, but I guess if I hadn't, then somebody else probably less qualified would have. Sounds familiar? Yeah. So, the basics are in this book right here. The Devil's Disciple is more about Cathedral of the Black Goat in the beginning, how we're organized and such. And the second book is sort of a reinterpretation of the book of Revelations. Now, the Devil's Bible, you can find it at Borders, Barnes & Nobles uh, in Baltimore. You can even find it in the public library. And on Amazon.com, just basically Google it and everything. The Devil's Disciple, at least for the time being, is only available from Severed Head Publishing, my publisher. Of course, you can find the Devil's Bible there as well. I seriously hope that uh, you seek these titles out and that you investigate more, especially with the old grimoires and everything. If I can encourage you to do that, then uh, you know I, I could sit up here and uh, talk about what I don't like about other groups and everything you know until I'm blue in the face. But ultimately, your own research is that that would be the best that there is. So, I hope that we can talk more in the future. You know, hail Satan, and uh, we'll see you then.